Yeah. A quick question nice, uh, for Nat. Not Nick. How can an up yeah? How can an upcoming rapper become a brand ambassador for H and H? I'm gonna die. No, I swear, I swear, I swear. Very simple. I'm from the streets. That was when I got this joint I'm gonna drop today. A lot of niggas don't know it from Rockefeller. It's that freeway and Beanie Seagull. Are they shooting a video? No, no, it's done. Are they shooting a video for that? Let me show the video already. Because I saw like a shot of a prince in the white poncho. So Nigeria's looking good to you? So niggas are messing with them Nairas, huh? Oh, they're paying dollars. First of all, what do you have to show them? Nice exchange rates, you know? Multiply by 11. Have that good scripture, scripture showing everything. Wow, it works out. Oh, you know, John, right? Jump, jump. Yeah, it is what it is. Yo, crisscross jump. And before that, Brenda Fossey weekend special. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Nick, you got some explaining to do. Um, okay, very <laughs> simple, man. Weekend special came out at a time when um, my folks and I know we should ask the kids, we're still living in Soweto. Can you okay. go? Okay. Back in the day, bro. So <laughs> that was a very exciting time, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, Mandela had just come out of prison. Yeah. Like, Soweto was alive, bro. Yes. Yeah. You know, I was like five, six years old at the time. Okay. Um, but, like, you know, you can, I can still remember those, you know, those, those days, those times. Um, and then it also reminds me of. Uh, an incident, uh, an occasion where my mom and my little baby sister at the time they bumped into Brenda first. Oh, okay. You know, at the mall. Oh, my brother. Oh, my brother. Proper life in action. You know, and then, yeah, it was just a crazy little moment. You know, she took my little sister, she took pictures. So it's always one of those things that just stuck in you know, my head. Okay. Um, and then Criss Cross reminds me of a time when, you know, it's a hip hop. That that's, that's 93. Yes. That's 93. That's 93. Like crisscross was 93. But obviously you know how it is. Like you know, uh, at the time, especially then, there was no internet. There was no yeah. MTV per se. Yeah, so yeah. stuff took a while. So yeah. probably that's like 94, 95. Yeah. Right at the time. Mm. So I was in primary school. I went to what they call a multiracial. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it was the first multiracial in my hometown. So there was a lot of kids there. Like. You know, You know, like hip hop and that type of environment was blowing up, you know. So, Chris Cross, when this joint came out, trusted, like, you know, on TV. I, I remember back in the day, day. We'll have our pants. Yeah. Backwards hoodies, style, backwards. hoodies backwards. Yeah. It was like, it was the craziest uh, thing, man. Our teachers didn't know what we were doing, but, <laughs> you know, but it, was, it represented like a good time, yeah. you know, in my life where things were chilled. No responsibilities like right now. <laughs> you know, just having fun, kicking yeah. it, and you know, just wild. And I think, uh, can, can you say that was your introduction to hip hop? I think so. I think so, dude. It's very, you know, when it comes to hip hop, it's very difficult to uh, just pinpoint that moment or that song mm. that just introduced you to just like the whole genre. But I think it was. Yeah. Not, I'm not sure. Could have been Heavy D. Yeah. <laughs> Or Chris Cross somewhere there. Somewhere because there. this track was dropped the same time as uh, Snoop. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah, no, there's a lot. Yeah. That was '93. It was '93. I remember. I remember this song when it came out '93. So we Maybe got more. How old were you? Why are you acting like you're an OG? Uh, no, I'm, I'm. I'm a youngin. But I mean, I remember because my older brother had this joint. We, oh, we, we were staying in Ohio at the time, so oh, we got it early. Oh, so we. Excuse. Ah, uh, no, no, don't worry about that. <laughs> But we got it early and yeah, mm. it's one of those joints from right back in the day. Let me go to Twitter quickly though. Mm. Getting a whole lot of uh, love from Twitter. Shout out to everybody tuning in. Do do I see you. Everybody in studio is also tweeting. Tweeting. Oh, tweeting. Hey, pause. Sorry to say a second language. Lizzo, Prinslow, I see you. Kiss Madonna <laughs> in these Twitter names. But there's a question here from Flameboy Pyro saying, a quick question to Nick. How can an upcoming rapper become an ambassador for Head Hound Show? Uh... It's, I get that all the time. Um, I think it's very simple. 
what you need to do is, and it's not just about becoming a headhunter ambassador, it's, it's anything, getting a record deal or getting recognized or whatever. You have to build your own movement. You, know, you gotta get one, your family to believe in you, then your friends, then your community, and then just keep on, you know, whatever, your peers. Yeah. Grow your own little fan base, grow, own, grow your own movement, and people like me will notice mm. eventually. Because mm. trust me, dog, like we have our ears to the ground, like we pay attention to what's happening in the streets. It's my job. Mm. I get paid. <laughs> you know, or I pay myself. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, to, yeah. to be able to, like, notice what's happening in the streets. So, I mean, I get those tweets, I get those. Facebook messages and emails or whatever. All you gotta do is push your movement. Mm. You know, if it's good enough and if people are loving your stuff, it's gonna get to us. Mm. You know, we'll actually come to you mm. and say, mm. "Yo, okay, easy. What you're doing is fresh." Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously sometimes you know, you know, I get caught up in like you know the day to day to day stuff running the business.